Anyway, so now we have basically a, a single voice. Um, now if we actually turn up the CV input here, we can already hear that we've actually got some um, modulation as well. But it's obviously single voice, so that's not much fun. But the point is we're going to carry on. So, now this is why I've actually started laying this out this way, is because basically what we're going to do is this part of the patch down here is going to go into a voice, and this part is going to go outside. So what we're going to do, uh, first of all, before we do this, I'm going to simplify the patch slightly. Um, I'd prefer, as I've got Perkins sensitive, perky sensitivity, I'm actually going to just use the pressure to drive the to drive the envelope directly. It just means less. Um, that's how I prefer it. So now what we're going to do, now the issues we're going to now face is once we put this inside um, a polyphonic thing, we're not going to be able to get to each individual voice UI easily. We can do it, but but it would be a pain in the neck to actually have to go and edit every voice and do it independently. So the way we're going to actually do this is actually we're going to control this by, um, by uh, separate dials. So what we're going to do, um, we're going to start by creating a pattern forward object. Now, what we want to do is we actually want to decide uh, which of these controls that we want to control. Now, I'm not going to do all of them all. Um, I mean, you don't need them all, generally. But what I want to do is I'm just going to choose a couple selectively now. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually this CV one here I want to be able to do. And that's because this is the intensity of the cutoff. Um, so I've got, I've got the cutoff being controlled by my sound plane, but I actually want to, the intensity that I want to control. So what we do is we use a pattern forward object, and that we then have to give it the, the label of that uh, control. And in this particular case, it's LPF, BP, LPF, dot, dot, uh, and then colon, double colon, um, CV1. Now, how do I know that? Well, the way to find that out is if we come up to here, it will save just to make sure we... We load up, you can see that actually in view parameters we can see a whole load of things here. And what we're actually interested in here is the scripting name. And we can, if we look down here, we will actually see that there is one called CV1 here. And you can see when you click on it, it highlights the one. So we can see which it is. So that's how you know what the name's called. And also, when we click on this object here, if we bring up the inspector, we can see over here it's bp.lpf. And you can change that because you might actually have many different um, filters. So you could call them LPF1, 2, etc. Now, um, what we're now going to do is we want to see that this actually works before we actually go any further. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to create myself a live dial. I'm going to put this up here, and I'm just going to forward this down to here. Um, now this range is, is 100%, so we can actually just set this up so it looks right. I'm going to call it 100 dot. We're going to make it called a um, unit style that's going to be a percentage. And we're also going to obviously call... Uh, I'm going to actually tick it as in presentation while I remember. And also, uh, we're going to rename it, and we're going to call it simply, I'm just going to call it frequency for the moment. Uh, yeah, frequency. Obviously, you can come up with better names than this. And then we're going to do that, and we're going to do that on the short name as well, and also the scripting name. Now, trick here. Um, when you want to use it with a push, um, you want to see the dial that you're creating um, at the front of the list. So what we do is we set this order to minus one so that it precedes all of the others. 
other because what you'll see on the push is that you actually you get all of the parameters available for all the voices which can get pretty confusing pretty quickly okay so we've done that now we just obviously test that it works Let's take it out a lot now and if we stand we can see there we are we can see it's moving around as we move that dial that's good um, i also want to have another dial um, and this time I, what i want to do is to do this waveform exactly the same format so we take a pattern forward here at this time it happens again you can go and look it up but it happens to be called oscillator and it calls is called waveform uh, I happen to know that. Uh, again, we'll get another live dial here. And we'll connect this one onto this one. And then again, we'll just, we're going to name it because we are actually going to use these dials later. Okay, and what we're going to call this one is we're just going to call this one Wave. Um, and again, I'm going to just cut and paste that into all my short names as well. And again, I'm going to put it minus one. So it comes up on my push earlier. Okay, so that's, and we could obviously add as many controls as we want here, and that would, that would work fine. Um, now, the other thing that we're going to actually want to do as well is we're going to want to attenuate the signal. But the issue is at the moment, uh, we've only got one voice, so it's gonna be, it's fine. But once we start getting many voices, then obviously as they start getting summed, then the volume gets out of hand pretty quickly. So I'm going to actually stop that issue up front uh, by creating myself a slider. Um, and put the slider here, and I will have a horizontal slider. And uh, what I'm going to do is call it, I'm just going to call it gain. Um, and I want it to actually be 0 to 1 uh, and unit star float and, and blah blah blah. I think that's going to be okay. Um, no, I include it in presentation. I'll include that one in presentation as well. Okay, and then all I need to do with that one, oh, I'm going to actually set the initial value as well before I forget. Um, and the reason is if I forget to do it, we won't get any volume. I'm going to actually set it to, I'll set it to one. Okay. Now, so now all I need to actually do here, if I move these up a little bit, is simply, I'm just going to multiply this out. So I'm just going to use um, star. Remember when you're using signals, always to put the the take the tilde version and also remember that they're all floating points so always put a dot in them as well okay we can now just test this quickly yep we still got uh, that's it nope <laughs> sorry forgotten to actually connect it up okay let's try Turn it. okay so that's working Good. Okay. So that's all the preparation done. So now we can actually make it into a poly object. And that's this bit's actually becomes fairly straightforward. Get rid of this. All we need to do now with this is to substitute the inputs and outputs. So what we're going to do is we're going to create some in objects. And these are numbered. And we're basically going to take these here and I'll duplicate these. One, two, three, four. Oh, there. I need to. Okay. Uh, connect these to these ones. Okay, and renumber them to and three. Okay, and now we can disconnect. Uh, sorry, I did need the four. Fine. I thought I did. Okay. Full foot for the game. Right, okay. Now what we can do is we can disconnect these because we're going to come via this via the inputs. That's simply this one as well. 
Okay, so now what you're starting to see is actually I'm starting to actually form the boundaries, as it were, of the two parts. Simply on the so on the output now, I don't actually want to be sending it directly to the audio output, I want to be sending it out via an output object. Um, and that's that. Now basically, this is now ready to go as a poly object. So now what we're going to now do is create another patcher, which is actually going to house this poly object. So what we do now inside here is we're actually going to take all of these objects, the ones that we had before, and can't paste these over here. Okay. Uh, everything quite so big. <laughs> okay, so this is going to be a main object. Okay, and what we're going to do here now, we're going to save this now. Now, this would be a standalone object if we want to use it here. Um, so we could save it elsewhere, but I'm just going to call, so I'm just going to call it D uh, synth. Uh, let's call it D main actually. Okay, again, I'm saving stuff just in case the math crashes. Now, what we're going to do is we now need a poly object, poly tilde object, which is how we're going to get polyphony. Um, and then we know that the th thing is called D voice. Um, D voice, and we know that we we're going to have uh, six voices in this particular example. We can have more if we want. And I'm also going to tell it to use parallel processing, which means it'll have a big round of separate threads. Okay. Um, now we can now actually close this patch. Let's, uh, because we could now actually open this from here. Okay, that's, which is a good way to just to keep track. But as I say, this is basically done this little bit. Now what we can do is we obviously now need to call it. So the first thing we can do is actually to use um, an output object so we can get some output. That's the easy bit. Of course, you can make stereo if you want. Now, if you remember, so what we need to do is in the first input here, this is actually the one where we're going to send the messages. This this one is the gain, and this one, these ones are the controls over the intense frequency and the gain. So I won't. Uh, sorry, leave this up here for a moment. Right. So first of all, what we need to do is to obviously get some messages going into it. Now the first part of that is to we need to send these messages through. And the way we do that is we need to do two things. We need to first of all um, tell it which voice, and we can do that by if we get the right sending it a target message, and we. Get the target message from the voice input here, which is why I had this one here. So that's the voice number. And you'll remember inside this T3D object, I made sure that this was sent first and that gets sent down into the poly object. And then I could just send this. Here. Uh, what I should have done is put these parameters the other way around so it would be a bit clearer, uh, but it doesn't matter. Okay, next thing we want to do um, is we want to be able to um, send in these parameters as well. And we do a very similar thing here. So, so what we actually do is we do a, we need to send in both the value and also the target. Now we can use, so what we're gonna do is do a trigger first and we take the type, which is float for the first one, um, and, and then a bang. Um, and I'm actually going to duplicate that three times. 
And then what we're going to do for each of these is we need a, a target message target. And we can use target zero, which means all voices. Now you'll notice I send this first. Okay. And again, we'll duplicate these, so always three. Okay. So what's happening is in each time, just like here, we first of all send a target and then we send the message itself. Okay, so we send a target into each one and then we send the message in here. And then we simply connect up these to the relevant objects. So far, so good. Um, if we're going to, yeah, what could have done. up here. Okay, now, um, uh, one thing I'm not sure I did here, the waves are in fact only from zero to three for all three of them, so let's get that right. In fact they're also integers as well, so we can send that as an integer. Um, and what we can also do is therefore this is actually this is an integer. Okay, so now we can actually see ah oh yes we can actually see we've got now you can so you can obviously see we've got polyphony and they're independent. And also if I turn up here, so I've got independent. So that's that. Um, now, so the final stage actually is to go from here, is to getting it into a, for live object.